In this problem, we're given the graph of a function, and we're asked to find the domain and range. To do that, I'm first going to write down the coordinates of each of the points. For example, one of the points I see has coordinates negative 7, comma, negative 5. I'm going to write that down, negative 7, comma, negative 5. This is one point on the graph. Another point that I see has coordinates negative 6, comma, 6. Another point would be negative 4, comma, negative 9. Another point up here would be negative 1, negative 2. So it's negative, the x value is negative 2, the y value is 9, negative 2, comma, 9. The last point that I see here has an x value of 10 and a y value of negative 8. So that would have coordinates 10, comma, negative 8. Now notice there's no line segments connecting these dots. You may not know it, but if we were actually to connect any of these two dots with a line, you've significantly changed the graph. Well, what that would mean is that the graph has not just five points anymore, but infinitely many. There's infinitely many points between any two points on a line segment, not just the whole numbers. Now, as math teachers, we tend to focus on whole numbers because they're easier to look at on the graphs. But it turns out that there's infinitely many numbers on a line segment. But for this problem, there's no line segment drawn. So I need to find the domain and range just given these five specific points. So the domain over here, if you remember what domain is, the domain is just a set of all possible inputs, which are my x-coordinates. So I just need to list the x-coordinates over here, negative 7, negative 6, negative 4, negative 2, and 10. But mathematicians have a particular notation that we use. You have to put your sort of order pairs in what are called braces, or some people call them curly brackets. So on the keyboard, you'll see just above the brackets, use the shift key to use a left curly bracket, or what I call a brace. So in my domain, I'm going to put left brace, and then I'm going to start listing my x values. Since they're just x values, not the points, that would be negative 7, and then we separate them by a comma, negative 6 negative 4, negative 2, and finally 10. Those are all my possible inputs, so I'm going to use a right curly bracket. To use, this is basically called set notation. It's used to just list a set of finite number of things. Now my range is slightly different. My range is just all the possible outputs. There'll be five on this graph because there were only five specific points. So the range is listed the same exact way with these braces. And what you would, do is you would do is just simply write down all your y values. So my y values are negative 5, 6, negative 9, 9, and negative 8. might surprise you to know that they don't actually have to be written in the order that I've written them here. In fact, some people would probably insist that we write them uh, in order of ascending order, like I did here, negative 7, negative 6, negative 4. But um, it just happens to come out that way. Uh, so my range here is going to be, let's see, my first y value was negative 5, second y value was 6. I'm just systematically going down the list here, negative 9, and then 9, and then finally uh, negative 8 was my last y value. So I'm going to make sure I remember to put my what's called a curly brace, or bracket, or a brace, um, and that would be my range, the set of all possible outputs. So for this graph, since there's five distinct points with no line segments between them. There's a finite number of possible inputs and a finite number of possible outputs.